welcome back students in this particular video we will be understanding the previous topic which was design procedure in more detail and today we have brought one example uh, where the question is that we need to convert a bcd code into a xs3 code and we have summarized all four steps that we have seen in our previous class let us go through that slide again uh, so these were the four steps which we had covered so it talks about uh, these four steps that we have summarized here that determine the number of inputs and outputs then we have to uh, create a table out of it from the table we will get equations and uh, from equations we will design the circuit <clears throat> so today we will implement all these uh, four steps in detail for a given problem and the problem uh, is bcd to xs3 conversion now if we will look at this table, to understand this table we have to first of all understand some very basic concepts. We have to understand first of all what is a BCD code. So BCD code it is also known as a binary coded decimal, binary coded decimal which is also referred as 8421 code. So it means that it deals with 4 bits and primarily this code was introduced so that uh, the normal digits that we use as humans they are from 0 to uh, 9 right 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so uh, the 9 is the highest number in order to represent 9 the maximum number of uh, bits that we will require here will be 4 only right 1001 is the digital code so it means if I had to represent the decimal number 0 to 9 in binary, the maximum bit, uh, the maximum bits required will be 4 only. So BCD code consists of only 4 bits. So that gives me the idea regarding the first step, which is the determining number of inputs and outputs. So inputs are clear that I need 4 inputs over here. So that's why these 4 inputs are being referred as A, B, C, D. So this is your ABCD which is the name we have given and we have decided that it has 4 bits. Similarly what is XS3 code it is also referred as uh, it is also written as in this format XS-3. Uh, XS3 code is simply your BCD code and you are adding 3 as the name indicates XS means add right more and 3 is a digit number so you have to add 3. So in short we can say if we are referring to an XS3 code then simply what will happen is uh, this 0 we will add 3 so 0 plus 3 is 3 1 plus 3 is 4 2 plus 3 is 5 so what we are watching every number is becoming uh, 3 XS to what it was earlier so 0 becomes 3 1 becomes 4 2 becomes 5 so similarly 5 will become 8 7 will become 10 and the last digit 9 will become 12 if you will see the digits on this side which is the output side again the last number is 12 and how many bits are required to represent 12 it is again 4 bits 1100 so uh, we again need to represent xs3 in binary we need only 4 bits so that is why we need 4 bits which is w x y and z right then you will also notice that whatever concept we have used here uh, like uh, we, have, we said 0 is becoming uh, you can say 3 1 is becoming 4 and so on so exactly the same thing is being referred in this table also so i will uh, first of all clear it again now what you have to only think is in terms of binary uh, in terms of binary right uh, so if you see this number is actually 0 this is 1 this is 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 and if you will see the numbers here this is nothing but 3 this is 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 so you can see very easily now 9 is becoming 12 right 3 is becoming 6 0 is becoming 3 now once we have finished this table we have already completed our step number 1 and 2 what were steps 1 and 2 let us again revise the first step was we need to find out how many inputs and how many outputs. So what is the answer to this question now? In this particular question we need 4 inputs and we need 4 outputs. And we have assigned the names also right? A, B, C, D here. And we assigned uh, like, like, like suppose W, X, Y, Z here. Then we have to design a truth table. So we have done it as per the relationship that exists. 
by understanding the behavior what is bcd all about what is xs3 all about so with this we finish step number one and two now what is step number three simplification with kmap so before we start our third step we have to understand one point that number of equations that we will derive from a truth table will always be equal to number of output columns or you can see now number of outputs so how many output columns we have so this w is one column of outputs x is the next column of outputs y is the another one and z is the another one so in total what we have four we have four output columns so we have how many outputs then four and second point you should also note down that number of k maps that are required for simplification is equal to number of outputs so because we are having four outputs so we need at least uh, we need <coughs> since we have four outputs it means four k maps are required those four k maps correspond to w x y and z now we will start our step number three that is simplifying the k map so we have to separately do k map for w then x then y and then z i will not show you all of them i will only show you uh, some of them all right uh, so before we start our step number three regarding k maps again a few very important points regarding bcd if you note down your input bcd the numbers start from zero and it finishes at only nine so we have numbers from zero to nine and we said that it's binary we are using four bits but from four bits we can have digits from zero 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 to one 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 but what are we using we are using only 0 to 9 as 0 0 0 to 1 0 0 1 because this is uh, this is the highest right this is the maximum we are using then the question is after 9 there is 10 also right there is 11 also there is 12 also then there is 13 also then there is 14 and 15 but are we using these six states the answer is no we are not using them because bcd uh, is only dealing about 0 and 9 so it means these numbers which correspond to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15, they are unused states. And these unused states in our K map will be represented by, it will be represented by don't care condition, which is represented by cross. Uh, so all these uh, states in our K map will be don't care and then uh, we can use either the min terms concept or we can use the max terms concept for solving the k map. Now we will refer to this w column and uh, we are using the min term concept here. So we can see where are 1s. It is at position 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Right? So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now what we will do? This is our k map before you will deal with the k map the very basic thing about k map is uh, it depends on number of inputs first of all how many inputs we have four input if we have four inputs we will be having two to the power n number of cells in a k map and n is what n is number of inputs where n is a number of input bits so because we are having 4 inputs, so 2 to the power 4 will be equal to 16. So we have to make 16 uh, cell k map and uh, its numbering, the way we have written uh, a, b, c, d over here. Uh, this is 0, a bar, b bar, c bar, d bar, then this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3, right? It is because uh, we use gray coding in this. Then similarly, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6, this is 7, this is 8, 9, 10, 11. This is 12, 13, 14 and 15. If you don't know the numbering, you can simply follow. Suppose you want to know why I have written 7 here. It's very simple. Check row, check column. So it is becoming what? A bar B C D. So it is 0, triple 1. That's why it is 7. If your doubt is suppose why this is 11 written over here. So check row and check column. So it is becoming A, uh, sorry, it is becoming A B bar then C D so it is 1011 1011 is 11 okay so this way you can cross verify the numbers now why we are doing this 
once we know uh, the numbering properly once we know how to set things in the kmap now we are left with only where have we fill where we need to fill ones so let us refer here so in w the ones are in which positions 5 6 7 8 and 9 so where is 5 6 7 8 9 we have already identified them this is 5 6 7 8 9 so 5 6 7 8 and 9 but we are not done because also note down this concept that these are my don't cares 10 to 15 so uh, this is my 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 so in this way uh, we have finished all the things in the uh, you know k map of w column and please remember this point that we need four such k maps for getting equations of w x y and z independently right now we are simply dealing with w now it is all about grouping right how many groups can you see here you can see uh, and the concept is uh, the group must be as large as possible so we can make group of 8 over here right so this is group number 1 and the answer we will get in this group is simply a right this is a now second group you can create second group you can create is group of these four and the answer will be bd in this part and since there is still one left there is still one left so we need to create one more group so let us create one more group and uh, this group will be these four and the answer is right now uh, bc so the answer is right now b and c so this is the equation for w uh, which is nothing but a plus bd plus bc or we can write it also as a plus b times c plus d now this is the equation for w we are not done yet uh, in the same way we have to also uh, do it for other columns which is x y and z so i will simply tell you the summary so this w we have finished right now this is an exercise for you uh, complete the process for uh, x also y also and z also and finally you will see that we are getting some simplified equations right and this is what we meant from uh, these steps once we are done with the design of truth table we have to simplify the things with kmap and ultimately you will get the equations and then what is our last step last step is we will design the circuit based on the equations we got so if you will again see these are the four equations now these four equations are being summarized over here now these equations will give us the logic diagram and this logic diagram also i will directly show you this is a logic diagram okay in step number four this is a logic diagram and these a b c d that you are watching on this side these are my inputs and this w x y z you are watching on the other side is the output right so this is a kind of a diagram where whenever you will put bcd on the input side your output will be xs3 and you can just verify whether it is working as per uh, you know the equations that we got here we can do that also let us try let us uh, remove it first yeah now in order to verify this is working properly let us uh, verify it from the equation because this uh, diagram has been derived from equations itself so what is w a plus b times c plus d so you can check also this is my a signal coming right and this AND gate is having two inputs one input is coming from here you can see right so what is this input it is the OR gate output and OR gate is having two inputs which is C and D so this is C plus D so this is C plus D and the next input is this one which is coming from B so you are multiplying it in a dot product so it is B dot C plus D so W will be what A plus B times C plus D this is one input of OR gate this is the second and this is exactly what was my w right so in this way you can you can check by yourself that the diagram that we are getting here and the logic diagram that is being drawn they are uh, similar right they are you know corresponding to one another so this way uh, we have actually understood how can we implement the questions based on these four important rules uh, whenever a question is given to you just follow these four steps uh, determine how many inputs outputs design truth table simplify kmap and ultimately create a circuit out of it 
so you keep revising this topic until you are clear on this and if you are having any doubts ask in the comment section i will see you in the next class in the next video so till then take care all of you and have a nice day